spaceship. And uh, I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by your side. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Theologian's Table podcast. My name in, is, not in, my name is Tim T. And I'm Tim J. All right, so we're fired up tonight. We've got our coffee ready to drink to keep us energized along with the Holy Spirit. Um, show off our merch there. Yeah, this the is our our merch. Theologian's Table coffee it's $57 mug. $57. Yeah, 57 plus eight ninety five plus <laughs> shipping and handling. <laughs> but anyways, we've got a interesting topic for you tonight. It's uh, <clears throat> praying in the spirit or also known as praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. And Tim J has wanted to talk about this since we started yeah, man. together. So um, tonight's the perfect night to do it since uh, the last few episodes have been about prayer anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's a full moon. So it is a full moon. <laughs> I, had, I didn't know that. I don't know if it is. Oh, okay. Just that out there. All right. Um, did you want to say anything before we go? I, I wanted to at least comment on this. Sure. Um, I think we said it in the last episode, but I wanted to kind of hear some feedback from anyone out there about the the name of the podcast. And I'm not saying like we're going to change it based on how, how people vote or whatever, but I wanted to I wanted to know what people thought. Do people love the theologians table or do they like theology taco? Something like that. Uh, yeah. So at the very end of the last episode, uh, which is two and a half hours, um, we, we mentioned that um, we are possibly thinking of a name change just because this isn't really formalized theology. Right. It's more of a, of a informal, I guess. It's casual, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, uh, Theologian's Table is a little bit more, I think you called it stuffy. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it is, it, it definitely, I mean, it, it I brings, that didn't sound insulting. no, no, it, trying to make. it brings intellectualism, like it's a highly intellectual name, <laughs> uh, even if, um, even with the, the table metaphor there. So, mm -hmm. um, and I love all the things about yeah. the name, the title, right. But yeah, it's not very, uh, eye catching maybe. Sure. Uh, so, and, um, what, what Tim and I do on this show didn't doesn't really reflect well uh, the original intent of the show, and I don't know if it ever did really. If 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 what I did ever reflected well in uh, the the title of the show, anyways, because it was mainly just like me preaching for seventeen episodes, so um, and me being uh, snooty and hoity toity. Mm. Um, and then I, I did, that. and then we did have a. Uh, uh, a few professional theologians mm -hmm. on. So, and, and I think um, I had three on. I had Dr. Alvarez, then I had Dr. Ritchie, and then Dr. Coulter. Which you still have access to these. People, right. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. You can go back. So they're in there. You, you just got to look for them. No, I mean, for, for future for, yeah. episodes. Yeah. Whether I'm on it or not, uh -huh. just just to hear, um, I would love to, if we could even get a third mic and uh -huh. interview someone. We you know? we would have to get uh, a bigger uh, focus right box. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, um, We're having awkward uh, share a mic with someone. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, I always thought that was funny about rock bands when I would see uh -huh. them sing live, right. and like two guys share the mic, and I'm like, why you guys? It's Aerosmith. Mm -hmm. You guys can afford another mic, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, they definitely do. You do. prefer to sing mm -hmm. the same mic? It always looks very strange to me. Yeah, anyway. and this <laughs> nothing to do with what we're talking about. Anyway, I mean, I'll talk about Aerosmith whenever, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we were talking about Wayne's World too off air. So well, they what was on that. Wings? Wayne, Wayne's World. Too. Wayne's World too. Yeah, they were, they were right. They yep, were when they came to Wayne Stock. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Anyways, what we do on the show is a little bit different from the original spirit of the theologian's table. And I kind of 
I, I like what we do now. I just don't think, even though we're sitting at a table mm -hmm. right now, the theologian's table is more, way more formal mm -hmm. than, yeah. than what we do. So, so if, if, if anyone has any interesting name ideas, we yeah. could go back to Theology Taco or um, keep something with table. I don't know. We had, we'd <clears throat> talked about the idea of doing something about, with seed time and harvest. Some Something about seed, you know, yeah. they always, it comes up all the time. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, there was there was something about that. And there's lots of scripture that we kind of hover around that yeah. would work out really well. So yeah. uh, maybe we should be responsible one day and like uh, evaluate it uh, together and, and see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have um, to think about it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just wanted to put that out there for the, the audience. If you guys think of anything, let us know. Mm hmm. Um, or if you love it and you think, hey, don't change it, it's perfect. You know, right. let me know that too. I know because I already have merch. There we, <laughs> we got merch <laughs> that you uh, can't buy. Of course, that could that could be very valuable. You mm -hmm. know, because like, one day, yeah, yeah, because then they could be like, oh, I have a cup from before they changed the name and they became super yeah. celebrated. Couldn't That's even right. walk down the street in Canada. <laughs> um, uh, I was going to say something. Hold on, what was it? Changing the name of the pod, you probably gonna have to edit this. Changing the name of the podcast, something else. Oh, were you gonna say something about? Uh, the, do you say what our what your email address is where they reach us? Oh yeah, so usually I put uh, I put it in the description of the show. It's theologytaco at gmail .com. Um, So if you ever have a question, and heck, if you have a criticism too. You can always email us and uh, and uh, state, ask or or state mm -hmm. whatever you, you want, what within reason. <laughs> let me put that uh, addendum on there. Right, so. and we're not covering the cost of shipping. Let me that, just let you know. That. Yeah, that either. This is an Amazon Prime. So, <laughs> all right. Anyways, uh, so you want to get into it? Yeah. Okay. Any want to talk about this week that happened? Anything? Uh, before, before we get into the nitty gritty, honestly, so oh, yeah, yeah. like the only, maybe not because I've had to practice a lot of self-control. Sure. You know, um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if we should even bring it up. Okay. And that wasn't where I was going. Uh -huh, I was right. just thinking. That's uh, but anything. that's you could have mentioned the dog, <laughs> right? We got a new dog. There that's right. Go. Yes, he's a uh, half lab, and I think it's black lab, and then half Jack Russell Terrier or a rat terrier, as they're known sometimes. So, and he has got all of the energy. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my neighbors when I was growing up had had the funniest mix dog mm. I've ever heard of. It was a mix between <laughs> a chihuahua and a pit bull. Wow. And I was like, how does that happen? Right. Exactly. And apparently the, the uh, chihuahua was the male. <laughs> so, and this dog looked so weird. I bet. Such a weird looking dog. His mm. name was Chiba. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Jack, I was just trying to picture Jack Russell in a lab, but anyway, mm. um, yeah. Great dog. But yeah, the other thing that you were not going to mention, which I'm totally cool with, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if you saw the look on my face. I was like, that's not what I meant. Because <laughs> no. Tim's going through something right now, dealing with some things with uh, church turmoil. Not right. oh, not your personal, of a friend of yours. Yeah. And it's ugly and it's bad. And uh -huh. you almost didn't want to record because you had so much going on in, in your in your head. And I wasn't, don't bring that. You don't have to bring up any specifics, but. No, I mean, well, uh, right. So. Yeah, last week we didn't record together, and I, honestly, uh, I don't think I could have without, you know, just blowing up. So it was good that we didn't record <laughs> last week. You know, with time, you get more perspective, and I still feel strongly about it, and I could probably word my criticisms a lot better. Sure. At, at the same time, you know, the issue is so ugly. <laughs> that uh it's i would still probably fly off the handle yeah you know and let's see it's may 31st 
2022. And if you're anybody who goes to church and pays attention in the to what's going on with the second largest denomination in the United States of Christianity, <laughs> yes, then then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, ugly stuff. Yeah, really despicable and like just I or, yeah. So let's. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring that up to get you to talk about. Right. It. I was just letting mm -hmm. because there was such a strong reaction. I didn't want mm -hmm. everyone listening to be like, "What is he talking about?" Right. You know, mm -hmm. it was not the dog, <laughs> something mm -hmm. else. But um, yeah. So, but we're here. We we did we did finally get to sit down. And uh, what are we talking about, man? So it's, tonight we're talking, as we said a little bit ago, about uh, speaking in tongues or. Some people call it praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to me, it's the same thing. Yeah. And I am a Pentecostal, so I'm going to approach this from a Pentecostal perspective. And we obviously <clears throat> are known for speaking in tongues. Um, sure. And Tim, uh, Jay, I mean, I've heard you speak in tongues, mm -hmm. so I know you definitely believe it. I'm a full on weirdo. Yeah. And so... Yeah, we're saying that speaking in tongues is still a, a gift that is circulating in the church today. Gift is the word, man. Uh huh. Gift right. is the word. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I think I I think let's approach this from a, a personal a historical perspective first. Okay. Like your experiences with speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And where, like, where did you first hear it or, and how did you come into it and, and things like mm -hmm. that? Uh, and I'll share mine as yeah. well. And, th and then we'll get, we'll get into the word. Right. Um, uh, so I have probably a very interesting perspective about praying in the spirit. And uh, I've talked to many people who, who are filled with the, filled with the Holy spirit and, and, and pray in tongues with the evidence of praying in tongues. I think everyone I talk to can tell me when they first heard it or when they were filled with the spirit. I have no memory of either. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember when I was filled with the Holy spirit. And I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means that it's just, I'm not going to say always something that I had, but if you grow up in an environment where it is, um, where that is a thing and it is heard, it's not a big deal to you. So mm -hmm. maybe I just, was filled with the spirit and it wasn't like a, an emotional thing. It wasn't, I've heard some people say that they, they've heard in the spirit. It sounded like the, the roof was being ripped off of, of the building that they were in. It was such a loud sound, but it was just in, in their own heart, obviously. But, uh, and then like they heard a rushing wind, like an ax two. you see that like rushing wind and they start, being filled with the spirit. And when I hear these, these stories, I've read a lot of them and they're all just so great mm -hmm. to hear the amazing experience that people have had with the Holy spirit. And then they're filled with joy and they can't stop praying in tongues. Well, I heard one guy said he prayed for like all night long. He couldn't stop, mm -hmm. you know, and he was just so filled with joy. And it was like, it was an experience. And I'm like, man, that sounds great. I, I never had that, but so yeah, the church I was raised in was um, they taught uh, tongues, you know, but it, it also there there was an order to it. Now we'll get we'll get more into that once we get into the the word side of it. But uh, because in First um, Corinthians, Paul lays out a ton about the order of how praying in tongues should be. So it wasn't just random people hopping up praying in tongues all over the place. And it was chaos. It wasn't like that. You mm -hmm. know, I've been to some churches where it's a little crazy, you know, or at least heard of a lot of these churches that are super weird. And uh, it becomes more about them as a spotlight, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. showing how gifted they are and, and weirding everyone out than, uh, than it is. Um, than it is the way Paul talks about it with tongues and interpretation, you know, but <clears throat> By the way, if anyone is tired of me clearing my throat in the <laughs> podcast, you're not alone. I hate it when I listen back to it and I'm like, if some, maybe it's coffee. I don't know. I clear my throat all the time and it drives me nuts when I listen to it. I'm like, dude, you've got to find help. I usually try to to edit it out because I also 
the audio version, I edit out my ums and oh uh and mm-hmm. long pauses. And I try to get your throat clearing or mm-hmm. your nose noise. And <laughs> even with all of that, I, see, I still hear it. Uh-huh. But, you know, it's authentic. So we, you can't, we can't do that with the YouTube uh, version because I'm just I'm not going to edit it that much. Yeah, it, it's sure. a lot more work with the YouTube. Yeah, version, make it so. as easy as possible. Plus, yeah. I, I don't I don't mind not mm-hmm. editing. But um, yeah, I just remember Rush Limbaugh would always do that. You'd always hear the paper, the papers uh, crumple and move all over. And you'd always yeah. do that all the time. You hear him sniffing and. Um, it's funny. At one time he even called attention to it. He's like, millennials don't like to hear all that noise all the time. Mm-hmm. He's like, apparently I do this. And he did it a bunch of times. And I was like, Oh, stop, stop <laughs> plugging my ears. Like, dude, don't do that. <clears throat> anyway. So, <clears throat> but so that was on a Sunday. It was, there was an order to it. It was a structure to it. But if you were in, in our church, uh, it's faith center. So if you were in our church, like in, in the leadership, so to speak. And if you went to a prayer meeting, it was like the way that we would do it was there was one mic and you could not just go up and grab the mic and mm-hmm. pray. You know, our pastor was like, no, I don't know what craziness you're bringing. <laughs> so you, you can only get up and pray if you're approved. And so there was like certain leaders and pastors and people who were approved to pray. And if you wanted, I think you had to go up and ask somebody, hey, can I pray? And yeah, they that's, make sure. smart. yeah that's smart. Yeah, it is. I mean, telling you our pastor was very smart on a lot of things um so yeah so it was like if you were in in the audience or whatever you were praying in the spirit kind of quietly to yourself or even a a little bit out so you could hear it was audible but you could still hear the person praying so whoever had the mic kind of set the direction okay everyone we're going to pray for our nation specifically we're praying for schools we're praying for this we're praying for that and then this person speaks in English and we're all praying in the spirit at the same time. I can hear him. I'm in agreement. You know, um, if you're not used to praying in tongues, that might sound strange, but I can pray in the spirit and, and listen to what Tim is, is telling me at the same time because mm-hmm. I'm doing two different things. You know, one is in my spirit. I'm not using my mind. And uh, so that was kind of my experience. So I, in a sense, I was used to praying with people. And then when I when I realized that it was a rare thing to meet Christians who were comfortable with that, I would go to prayer meetings and it was dead silent all the time. Yeah. And my first reaction is like, this is a lifeless and it's probably a little <laughs> critical. But uh, and I've come I've come to be more respectful, but I've also come to just not go to those prayer meetings. OK, because it's just pointless to me. Uh-huh. And I'm not I'm not saying that they're dead. I'm, it's not really a criticism. It's just I, I don't think well. If it's completely silent mm-hmm. and uh, I'm listening to this person pray and I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Right. I just feel like what, like, I feel like Ricky Bobby holding his hands up. <laughs> like, what do I, what do I do? Do I just sit quietly? And after a while, I'm just like, oh, I'm in, I'm in my own head. Mm-hmm. I need to pray in the spirit so I can get in the spirit. You yeah. Know, and get out of my head. Um, so anyway, a, a little brief, I may get into more, but that's kind of my experience. What, what was your experience of yeah. Uh, well, I was exposed to it very young. Uh, my parents, uh, I started off in a independent Pentecostal church. I don't, I don't believe it was part of any denomination, but you know, they spoke in tongues and I believe it wasn't very orderly. I, I think, um, I think like the pastor would invite people to pray in, in the spirit and it was, most of the adults in the church uh, praying at the same time mm-hmm. in tongues. So, um, you know, then we church top around a little bit. And um, I, in my 20s, I always would think back on uh, that experience when I was younger and wonder uh, if, you know, the people were actually praying in, 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 the t- in tongues or if they were faking it. And the reason why I say that is because I, I when I read uh, you know, chapters like 1 Corinthians 14, when Paul lays out an order of uh, speaking in tongues in the church, yeah. you know. Uh, so, and, you know, I thought, you know, I interpret that pretty black and white. Um, and so, then, um, and, you know, I started to question it in, in general, like the whole thing about 
speaking in tongues. So, um, and then, um, then in my early thirties, like I was 31 or something, I got baptized in the spirit I okay. got, and I started speaking in tongues. So, yeah. um, then I'm like, okay, yeah, this is real. Obviously yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. doing it. So, <laughs> so cool. Um, and then, um, Th 31, where were you at 31? Generations? No, no, it was bef way before, uh, a few years before generations. So, but it was a Pentecostal church. Yeah, it was. Okay. Oh yeah. It was a Pentecostal <laughs> church and it was like a meeting for pastors too. And my grandfather-in-law, uh, Anna's grandfather, yes, yes. he's a pastor. He invited us to go. Um, and yeah, uh, that's where I got baptized in the spirit and so started cool. speaking in tongues. So, and now, um, I'll speak in tongues often, off and on. It's not a regular occurrence. Um, and like, I'll get into this, I'll get into it now. What the heck? Sure. Um, sometimes I'll wake up speaking in tongues and I, and I, the reason why I say I'll get into this is because people might say, well, you're just like in a confused state and you're waking up and you're just mumbling. And, and I'm like, no, it's very distinct actually. Mm. So um, I know when I'm speaking in tongues and the last time I spoke in tongues in, in church was in a prayer meeting for uh, when the U S pulled out of Afghanistan and all the crapola yes. that was going on there. Uh, sure that. After I, I got off the stage and sat down. I just busted out speaking and praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. So, um, around a lot of very reformed people. <laughs> sure. So, um, yeah, that, that's my experience with, with tongues. So, yeah. And in, in school in seminary, uh, professors, we, you know, when someone would bring up a prayer request and if it was like, and even over Zoom, we would just, they would, he, the professor would start speaking in tongues uh, in, in prayer. Yeah. Which I thought was like, is cool and insane at the same time. <laughs> well, it, it's almost like it, it takes something that's very supernatural and it takes it, it brings it into the, your regular world. Mm -hmm. And without seeming like, like, go grab the smoke machine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like. It's like something that's very supernatural and, and very spiritual should be every day because mm -hmm. here's Jesus living that way. Here's the early disciples, as, as we'll talk about, and or the early church and the apostles doing miracles and things like this all the time and hearing hearing from the Holy Spirit so distinctly, so distinctly, like exactly where, what street to mm -hmm. go down. You know, you're going to meet a man named Cornelius. He lives right. here, you know, yeah. or whatever. And it's like it's so specific. And it's like, that's it. That seems pretty supernatural, man. Yeah. You know, like the, even the great prophets of old, they did things like that, but it was very rare. And here it is happening to everybody right. in the early church. Yeah. You know, so it is kind of cool to just be in, in the middle of a meeting um, and hear something like that. Um, I watched this video one time. Um, it was uh, Pastor Hagen Sr. And uh, he was he was at a, a conference, like a minister's conference or something like that. And we watched it in the uh, early church history class. And um, no, not early church history. <laughs> that wouldn't be it. And it was church history of, of some sort. And uh, and it was so it was so funny. It was a trip. No one was expecting this. He's talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. And he's talking about I can't remember exactly what it was, but he's talking about something. And then out of nowhere, he just starts praying in tongues mm -hmm. like loud. And it was like, whoa, 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 what's happening here? Because he was just preaching. And then uh, he just switched over in, into praying in tongues. And then uh, and you kind of see people in the audience kind of like perk up. And they, some of them stand up. And then he stops and goes, I don't know about y'all, but I want the glory. Mm -hmm. And he just falls whoo, straight back, almost like somebody just shoved him straight back. And he falls down and he is like, he's laughing. And everyone is like laughing because he's just... He's funny. He's a funny guy. And they're laughing at him. And, and he's he eventually gets back up with some help. And he's like, hold on, hold on. Before all this stuff gets crazy, I just want to say one more thing. And he opens up his Bible and he's just saying, here was the last point I wanted to make in, in my notes. Okay, now the Holy Spirit wants to do something. And so like the rest of the service was transformed into 
a very uh, spiritual, Holy Spirit, crazy, awesome thing. Mm -hmm. and I got to watch it. You know, this was in the, I don't know, early 90s, maybe. Mm. Um, but yeah, so it was cool to just see someone preaching. And then like the Holy Spirit was like, we're going to derail this. Yeah. I want to do something here. Mm -hmm. And I love how he was just like, what, one thing. So let me get this one thing in here, Holy <laughs> Spirit. And then, and then, then we can go. Mm -hmm. But so a lot of that was was very common in my church that I grew up in, but also in Rama and a lot of those um, a lot of those experiences that I've had. So it's it's actually strange to me to be at churches that don't emphasize the Holy Spirit much and don't emphasize tongues and don't really teach much about it. Uh, it's it's an adjustment. and I don't know what to do sometimes. Yeah, I have a. Uh... I had kind of have like the reverse situation of what you've got going on right now because I went to a Pentecostal uh, college and then seminary or grad school, if you want to call it that. Um, and the churches that I went to while I was going to those places didn't emphasize the the Pentecostal distinctives. So it's been very hard for me to still accept some of the distinctives, like even speaking in tongues, just because I'm not in uh, good practice with it, I would say. Okay. And it's weird for, hopefully this doesn't hurt anybody. It's weird for people to, it's weird for me to go to churches who are in a Pentecostal denomination and don't emphasize, um, you know, spirit inspired worship or, sure. or whatever. Sure. And, you know, I believe God leads us to places for a reason. So I went to these churches because mm -hmm. God led me there. But at the same time, I kind of wish that I was also going to a church that emphasized um, or at least acknowledged <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the uh, movement of the Holy spirit in, in worship, you know, from praise all the way, through the end of the sermon, whatever, yeah. you, whatever, um, because I would feel more confident in, in my beliefs. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I right Sometimes I feel like I'm just talking the talk, you know, uh, about Pentecostalism. I haven't really, you want to see it demonstrated. Yeah. I want to see it demonstrated. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting. Right. And, and, and that's why I think I'm so, blessed man i'm so blessed I, the church that you say this about any church um that like th it had issues it had issues in leadership it had issues with with everything you know um i don't mean i don't mean to say that it was like the perfect church or anything. there is no perfect church that's right. the old saying right but um i really want to emphasize how blessed i was to grow up in an environment like that because our worship was not so good it's really good. And when you're talking about spirit inspired worship, um, a lot of the people on staff wrote their own music and it was really good cool. too. Um, mm -hmm. But there was always a, there was always like, I'm not musical, so I don't know the terms, like an interlude maybe where it's like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, or, you know, and somewhere in there, there's a moment where it's like, no, singing mm -hmm. and it's like just worship worship from your heart we're going to linger in this place we feel the holy spirit's here let's just linger here that's called and that was my every day right. that's that called a responsive segment a resp <laughs> <laughs> all right a responsive segment it is mm -hmm. uh whatever it was called i know hillsong did it a lot mm -hmm. does it a lot yeah and I, I love it because it really is a, a moment where you can just say like I want to say, I get the words on the screen are good. Mm -hmm. I, I I like that I can say them if I don't know what to say. But that's the moment where it's like I just want to praise you. I want to talk to you and tell you how great you are and and be in worship. And man, that is a spiritual moment. And that was like in so many services I I was in. And Sunday night, probably Faith Center too. But I was thinking at, at Rama. That's what's where um. My wife and I, it was our favorite services were the Sunday night services mm -hmm. because the uh, associate pastors would speak. We had some great associate pastors. And uh, but you knew you knew 
if if there was a moment of worship and there was a certain there's about two pastors you knew that if the holy spirit was moving during worship he would let he would yield his time to speak and we would just be an, an amazing worship service dean tad the dean of the students tad gregorich he was one of those that if you heard him <laughs> heavily breathing on the mic <laughs> because it was his turn to speak but he was just like <sighs> uh -huh. like let's just be in this and we're like yes yes tad go for it man go for it and there was another guy i think maybe bill ray too was another one um but both great and you knew that they were very sensitive to the moving of the holy spirit other others were great and they were fine but you could tell because it's like you're in this place your eyes are closed you don't know who has the mic and then all of a sudden you hear boy that was good <clears throat> all right <laughs> praise god it's uh, let's have a seat and you're like you just killed it you know yeah and that's probably my cynicism but i love that i love those moments and uh I haven't been to a church that does that in way too long and I uh -huh. miss it. And yeah. sometimes it's like there'll be an interlude in worship now and it's like dead silent. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're playing music, of course, but I just mean like there's no like worship pastor leading and telling congregation who may not know what to do, like lift your hands and worship. Just tell God, just praise him from your own heart. It's just dead silent. And I'm like, OK, now it kind of feels like a performance. Okay. Yeah. And not like worship. Now it feels uh -huh. like I'm watching a band. You know, <laughs> not to insult anybody. I really don't mean to sound like that. But mm -hmm. My perspective. That's interesting. I'll have to think on that a minute because, you know, it might be because people aren't used to. It might be because of the lack of of emphasis that people are like, well, what do we do now? I think that's exactly what it is. Oh. Uh, and, and so, yeah, they're just I waiting. I don't think the worship leaders who led it, in my experiences, uh, knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. I think they were taught. Just like everything, it, whatever you emphasize, you'll see more of. You know, if you see this with churches who emphasize healing, they see more healings. Mm -hmm. Churches who emphasize the, the, the move of the Holy Spirit, they see it. They experience it. Churches who don't believe in it never see it. Why is that? Is God just not moving? No, they're just not emphasizing it. God wants to. Yeah. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's all about whatever you focus on, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I think that's a, a good point because um, <clears throat> how can I phrase this in a way that um, makes sense? It's that at, at least acknowledge that the Holy Spirit's there. You know, yeah. oh, I had a much better point. Gosh darn it! With 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 with, with the way that everything is going on uh, in churches today, you know, we we I hear constantly about how this or that denomination is emphasizing more uh, of the charismatic stuff, and then th they say like, uh, you know, we're inviting the Holy Spirit. Uh, to in this worship service, but what does that exactly mean, mm -hmm. right? What do you mean by that? Are are you are you wanting the Holy Spirit to who's always there, by the way, yeah. to to manifest, or are you just you know wanting to give people uh, goosebumps mm -hmm. and, and say, oh yeah, you know this is a spirit inspired worship, and then just move on to mm -hmm. the next. Uh, whatever is scheduled on the worship program. So I think that there's a lot of people, a lot of leadership inviting the Holy Spirit, but not acknowledging that they need to give space, like yeah. responsive <clears throat> space to what the Holy Spirit is doing yeah. in the worship mm -hmm. service. And, they're, and then maybe they're not teaching their, their congregation um, I, so we're not, we're not teaching the congregation in, in a way that brings the past into the present. Like we, we still keep, uh, the past at arm's length. And what I mean by that is like, what's happening in the apostolic church with the empowerment of the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. So, and we need to be able to to teach that um, 
and and mean it and give space to to that rather than just look good saying it to look good sure does that make sense yeah uh -huh. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um and maybe they don't know how to teach that or maybe they just don't care i don't know yeah um and it, that almost speaks to a bigger issue actually um not to derail the conversation but um it almost speaks to an issue of structure versus, um, I don't know, being open to the Holy Spirit moving. And I don't think you have to choose between the two. Yeah. But um, I, I do see this. This is a conversation my wife and I have gotten into countless times. I actually really love it. It's a good conversation. Uh -huh. But it's the idea that our, uh, our church is way too structured. Right. Yeah. We start at this time. We're done at this time. The end. Uh -huh. And it may be in some cases where it's like, okay, well, this service is done, but we have an 11 starting, so we kind of do have to be done at that time. Right. Fine. What about the second service? Is there, are you open to maybe it going a little bit longer, worship going a little bit longer? Or is it like, no, we're structured, that's it. Yeah. Versus churches I've been to that are like almost not structured at all. You'll have some of the greatest worship ever. It, amazing. There was one specifically in Tulsa that Aaron and I visited. It was like the moment praise and worship started, we were not like, um, I don't want to say this the right way, not prepped spiritually. So we weren't like praying as we're coming in. It was a normal Sunday. We we're just checking out churches. Honestly, tired of checking out churches. Yeah. And uh, we walked into this one and like from note one, oh, you could tell the Holy Spirit was thick in that atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. Um because when we say the Holy Spirit's with us, that's absolutely right. But there's also moments where it's like there's a thickness. Or yeah. Some, you know, absolutely. You feel his presence so much more. He's doing something very uh -huh. intricate. And we knew right away. We kind of both looked at each other like, whoa, this is so legit. And so we loved it. It was like 20, 25 minutes, almost 30 minutes of nothing but praise and worship. We were like, this is our charge. Like, finally. <laughs> and then... They continued to have the rest of the service as if we didn't just have 30 minutes of so that we were there for like three hours. And I was like, enough. Uh -huh. I'm someone who loves atmospheres like that. Mm -hmm. But so that would be the far end of it. So one one side's way too structured. One side is like, I got stuff to do today. Right. I want to be home. I get it. Mm -hmm. In those moments where the Holy Spirit's there, it's great. It's powerful. But like doesn't have to be every Sunday. It's fine. So it's like, those are the two sides. And I think find it somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Have a structure, allow the Holy Spirit to interrupt, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. And I think a lot of, maybe a lot of pastors are worried about how many moving parts there are on a Sunday morning. Um, let's say you're a church of like 400 people. You've, you've got, uh, different ministries happening happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, two main ones. You've got the adult service and then you have the children mm -hmm. slash youth ministry. And so they're, they're like, maybe uh, we want to give, well, we always want to give the time for this, but then like, what do we do about the kids' ministry? How long can we keep uh -huh. the kids? Uh, How long can we play Simon Says for? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> but at the same time, well, I'll just bring the kids in. Or, or something like that. Sure. <laughs> and, and that's, no, that that's, it's a good point. And um, one of my bros was talking to me about that, about how uh, he either goes or went, I can't remember which, to a church that was kind of very unstructured and sometimes would take hours and hours, you know? And he's like, but if you're serving in that moment, it's frustrating. Yeah, it is. He's like, yeah. no, 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 mm -hmm. still, still going. The Holy Spirit's moving. And I'm like, can you tell him to stop because I'm stressed out, you know, uh -huh. uh, and it's like, fine, you deal with the kids. So I, I, I do think that that's I don't know that there is a right answer. Mm. I think some of it kind of depends. Um, but but I, I think it's a good conversation to have. It's a good thing to be aware of. Like, mm -hmm. listen, if you're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to um, uh, to take over a service, so to speak, I don't know what phrase to give that except just to say take over the service. Um, you have to be aware you have children's workers and like honor them. Don't mm -hmm. do that every week. Right. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. throw them a yeah. Chick-fil-A gift card or something. <laughs> but um, I, I have heard of a, a service like that happening. And they uh, they came to the head pastor and they were like, we need to release these kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of bulls or something. We have to release the bulls. 
And uh, and they did. He was like, let them out. Let them come in here. We're having a revival. They need to be here. Mm-hmm. And he said when they came in, uh, so many of them just kind of fell out. And all these like little voices were worshiping God. And he was like, it was beautiful. I think sometimes we do protect like, no, 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 no this is the adult. Right. Like, it's the same Holy Spirit, man. He yeah, wants to absolutely. speak to them. Yep. Uh, but there, and I also want to say this in defense for the order churches. Uh, the Holy Spirit can still move in that. I feel like there is a conversation that people are like, well, the Holy Spirit wasn't here because we told him to be done at 1030. No, everything God does is in order. There's mm-hmm. a structure to the universe, to, to the earth, yeah. there's structure to everything. Mm-hmm. So it's fine to have structure in your service. I think you just need to make room if you're not already for him to move if necessary. But I think you can have an, an hour service and it, the Holy Spirit be there and worship, be yeah. there with the speaking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think uh, this opens a can of worms <laughs> uh, with me. Like, I, th- I think the Holy Spirit is definitely going to be present, especially in the preaching. And how I know that is when the sermon is relevant throughout the whole entire week. If you go, you know, from Sunday to Sunday mm-hmm. um, and you're just still like thinking about what what was preached like the whole week. Yeah. I think that the Holy Spirit is present in that. And I think, um, yes, good. Point. You know, it, it's like it would be the same thing to say, well, we only, you know, God only moves supernaturally. Um, college is the devil or something like that. Yeah. I'm going to bring up college <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and then, or education in, in, in general. And, and, and and so you have this you have this weird paradigm where God only moves supernaturally. He can't move in in studied in, in like super right. study focused things with and, you, with you in, in your room. Right. With your books out. Yeah. studying. Yeah. Right. When it's um, a very good point. But, you know, that reduces that's so reductive <clears throat> to the power of God. Right. So, um. Yes. If, if if there's not running and falling over and rolling on the floor and right. all those things and the Holy Spirit wasn't there. Yeah. I hate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because I can tell you that my favorite times with God are, is when it's just me and God. And mm-hmm. I've been in some great, great like worship services where uh, Redemption to the Nations. What? Oh, hold on. I have to make a correction. Redemption to the Nations is the name of the church okay. in Chattanooga. Uh-huh. I called it Christ for the Nations, which is totally different in texas that's probably just for one person listening who that drove crazy but <laughs> no I was, I was listening back to it and i was like you dummy that's in texas no mm-hmm. redemption to the nations is kevin wallace's church i was in he has an amazing church and so i was in one of those services and i was in worship and my eyes were closed for such a long period of time and i i was literally scared because i didn't know what god was going to show me because i felt so i felt him so close and I was afraid if I opened my eyes, he was going to be right in front of me, or I was going to see angels, or or I was going to get lost somewhere in the spirit and be stuck in this place, you know, mm-hmm. like frozen and can't move or something. It was like, that's how potent the presence of God was. Um, so those are great, too. I'm really good. But some of my favorite times with God really are when it's just me and God, mm-hmm. like just while I'm working, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I that's a great point you made, because. The Holy Spirit was present with me this morning when I was when I was in my devotion. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that just to say he's always with me. I mean, he's confirming the word as I'm opening. I can feel his presence. And I'm like, oh, he's showing me something about burdens. Here we go. (laughs) Red making notes. And I was like, oh, this is great. You know, Uh so, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. So as it so specifically about praying in tongues. What was most on your heart about this topic? Can you boil it? Can you, can you find a starting place? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I, and I'll, I'll try, I'll try to make this quick. Cause I was going to use this as the introduction. So I'll try to condense it a little bit. Um, most times when people talk about the Holy spirit, I'm, I'm talking about pastors from stage or ministers teaching a class or something. Um, they always talk about how it's a um, what's taught about the spirit is very mysterious. 
You're not really sure what he does. He's the third part of the Trinity, but he's the weird one, maybe. You know, that he had a moment in Acts, but nobody really knows what he does. You know, and people say, I mean this with respect, but people say all the time, like, spirit come. And I want to say I know what they mean, but it's like, but he's here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Aaron, uh, my, my wife was at a worship thing and she was she was one of the worship leaders. And the head pastor came after this amazing time of worship. He came up and he was like, I think we need to beg the Holy Spirit to come. And and so like they all were begging. And she was like, this is stupid. No, he's here. Don't you feel it? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you need to beg that you have some sensitivity in your heart that you can sense it. How do you not notice that he's here? You know, Um, but there is just that sense that uh, there's not a lot of really good teaching on the Holy Spirit. I mean, I've heard a lot of good teaching, but I just mean maybe big big church, a big C church, like as a whole. Okay. There's a lot of misconceptions. So I even hear people say there's a lot of misconceptions and then they talk about their experiences, the good or the bad, mostly the bad. And they don't really say much about what the Bible has to say about the Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, we, we spent this whole time talking about our experience just because it's interesting to me. Yeah. It's it's super cool. To, how did you get filled with the spirit? What do you think about him? What did you think about him before? What do you think about him now? That's cool. But if you're teaching on the Holy Spirit, your experience is not only secondary, it's like far down the list of importance. Right. How do you teach on the Holy Spirit and not say what the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Like you could, we could just do nothing but that. Mm-hmm. When does he show up? What does Jesus say about him? You know, what, what is his role? What, what, are, what are his activities? How can you tell it's the Holy Spirit and not a bad spirit? You see a lot in the Acts, lots of bad spirits, a lot of small G gods. Mm-hmm. And so I, I see this and I, I feel like I probably have a gifting of teaching in the, uh, um, not fivefold ministry, uh, ministry gifts. The reason I think that is because every time i hear someone try to describe something about the holy spirit and i'm like who cares who cares who cares they're going through the list you know this person was praying for me and then he made a cow sound and and then other people were making pig sounds and chicken sounds and i'm like who cares about what you saw what does jesus say about the spirit of truth Uh i'm not saying don't talk about your experiences i'm saying like that's not first on the list you know right what does the bible say so this is something that was drilled into us big time at Rama, is that they were always like, you have to bring it back to the word because there's some crazy doctrines out there. Mm-hmm. Like bring it back to the word. If you can't really back it up with at least two scriptures, sometimes three, and certainly context matters, what um, uh, dispensation of God's grace was in operation at that time, meaning like in the old, before the law, during the law, Um, now, now that we're under grace, the church is under a period of grace. As Paul said, we're not under the law. That context is important. So that's kind of what I want to get into now, if you're cool with that. Yeah. Um, but uh, we could switch it though. What, what about it to you is, uh, well, I mean, what's for me, what's interesting is exactly the reasons that that you think it's interesting is what the word has to say about Mm. speaking in tongues or any manifestation of the Holy spirit in general. Mm. And then the second thing is that it's still relevant for today's church. Uh For gosh sakes, you do that. You look at the camera and Uh I'm like, I forget that things there. I'm I'm such a big podcaster. I don't think about that. Anyway, it's relevant. He's Uh relevant. I said it. Yes. He's relevant today. Mm. Yes. Because it it is about, I mean, if we want to preach some some doctrine, I mean, the Holy Spirit is has agency, uh, being God, and He has a big theological word. What is it? Agency and sovereignty. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, over creation. Yes, and especially in 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 worship. And you see that all throughout scripture. And so I don't know how people could um, start with anything but scripture. Right. I mean, experience, like you said, is good, but 
scriptures better. So right. it's not a spare tire. Um, it's you know. it's it's almost like uh, to to bring it to a funny parallel. It's like we, we listen to people who are like really big health fanatics. Yeah, and they know a lot about food and nutrition and all that stuff. My tendency is when I hear that, or the, the, I'll point out a contradiction, and not to be a jerk. I just notice like there may be a contradiction in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, we're not supposed to eat eggs. And I'm like, really? Because they said don't, and then do, and then don't, and then do five times over. We're not supposed to eat eggs. No, we are. Mm -hmm. um, the tendency is to be like, see, that is why I don't even pay attention to what the medical, you know, mm -hmm. but really that's a mistake. And I think people do that sometimes with the Holy Spirit. They'll be like, I had a bad, I went to a church and they were wild and they were crazy. And somebody tried to slap me in the face and say it was the Holy Spirit doing it. So that's why I don't buy into any of that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. You're missing it. Right. Don't let your experience dominate everything. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's what I did for sure. a long that's time. That's what a lot of so, people do. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what I do about health stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My brother had a good post. Uh, he said uh, th there was a new study talking about how coffee is good for you. You know, and he said, we, we have to read the material that we agree with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're coffee drinkers. So yeah. it's like, uh -huh. yeah, anyway. So, so what does the word have to say? You want to get off into something? I mean, do we want to, we, like, we could do this in order. I mean, we could talk about Acts 2, 4. Well, I was going to say even in order, I, I don't mean to go here, uh -huh. but um, this is something that's interesting. Creation. Right. It said that um, the spirit of God hovered over the face of the earth. That's right. Yep. Okay. Now, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the Hebrew word for like hovered is referring to like a mother hen hovering and sitting on her eggs. It's um, almost like preparing, like brooding. Like preparing the I think, earth for I creation. I think brooding is is a good uh, yeah. synonym. Uh, I can look it up. Mm -hmm. But I, I wasn't going to start in the very beginning. But right. there, there is, it is interesting to see the activity of what what does the Father do, what does Jesus do, and what does the Holy Spirit do. Mm -hmm. You know, other people have said it better than I can. But um, you know, it alludes a little bit to this in John. Uh, chapter one, when it says that uh, talking about the word Jesus, that uh, by him, he, he created all things. And there was nothing that was created that he did not create, mm -hmm. you know, but you see the Holy Spirit in action as well. Brooding, you know, That's being right. a part of creation. Yep. And, and you hear in Proverbs eight, maybe one of my favorite Proverbs, by the way, because it talks about he, he uses wisdom almost as if it's a person. Yes. You know how he said that he said, I wisdom was uh -huh. with God, was with the creator in the beginning. Yeah. You know, he used me as a master craftsman. Yes. And so you see God as a creator using this, this perfect, oh man, it's just beautiful. I can't even illustrate how much I love that proverb, but it's beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. But so I say that to say that they're, they all have certain characteristics and Jesus illuminates so many of these characteristics about the Holy Spirit in John 14. Right. So the, the Hebrew word, um, which I don't know why it's not giving me the, uh, the, um, it's unpronounceable. Uh, I can't pronounce that word. What are the letters anyway? RHP. Um, where's hovering? Mm. Come on. I was going to take a stab at it, but I'm not going to. I can, it's got a, <laughs> I have to put my headphones on for a second. Mm -hmm. So you can hear it? Yeah. Rachaf. Rachaf. That sounds very... All right. So it means to Jewish. tremble, flutter, uh, and hovering over the face of the waters. And if you want to get theological about that, water in Old Testament Hebrew theology, it means chaos. Yeah. So the universe was in existed in chaos. Mm -hmm. Spirit was hovering over that and eventually he brought order to brought, it. brings order to it. That's yeah. right. So, um, through bara is so creation. Did God create the chaos? That's a good question. Right? I mean, I don't want to go here. <laughs> right. Let's, let's talk about tongues. <laughs> That's, it's interesting. I right. love hearing people's theories of creation, mm -hmm. you know, young earth, old earth, 
So I love hearing so much about that. I don't know that I care. It's interesting to me. And some things are really important doctrinally that we have to keep straight doctrinally. Right. But, um, that's just a theory. I'll listen to it. But right. Um, anyway, so I was going to go here unless you had. No, go. Please go. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So um, this is one. Of, I'm pretty sure this is one of the first times that Jesus ever refers to the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, we're in John chapter 14, uh, verse starting in 16. Uh, well, I'll probably go up a little bit here. Jesus is talking to his disciples. This is toward the end here. I know John's not in chronological, chronological order, but he talks to them about so many of these amazing man. John 14, 15, 16, 17 are po powerhouse uh, chapters. They're yes. so good and so meaty. And I cannot get through one chapter in a, in a week, you know, because there's just so much meat in each of these. But uh, so here he's talking to his disciples. And it's always important to kind of know a timeline because what Jesus said in the beginning is true. But what he said in the end is urgent. You mm -hmm. know, it's all true. He's the light. He's the truth in him. There is no darkness. But at the same time, when you hear him repeating things, that means that's important. You right now, <laughs> mm -hmm. when you hear him toward the end, what's the last thing he says? Boy, that's really important. You know, that's very urgent. So I think this is toward the end. Uh, when when he starts explaining to them about how he's going to leave, um, he wants to give them hope. So uh, what did I say? Okay, so uh, for 13. So he's saying, um, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So you see uh, in, in so many other places here, you see such a unity between Father, Son, and Spirit. Mm -hmm. Such perfect unity. Uh, 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray to the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Uh, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. Mm -hmm. He's giving them hope and he continues. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and you will see me no more. But you will see me. Um. So just to kind of break that one down, what does the word helper mean? Do you know? What's the Greek word? In the helper? Greek word, the yeah. paraclete. Paraclete. Yeah. So that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. So here he is saying, um, uh, I will pray to the Father and he will give you a helper, a paraclete, and he will abide with you forever. So he abides with you. Um, the word paraclete is, it has seven different meanings. And they're not seven different meanings. They're just, it's almost like, if I'm saying this right, it's like all of them are applicable. Yeah. It's not just like. So are you saying that <laughs> it's a multifaceted word? <laughs> That's a $2 word. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't have all seven with me right now, mm -hmm. but I can take a stab at, at, I'll try to see if I can get at least close to seven. So it means helper, literally someone who helps. It is a uh, a teacher, a um, an advocate, um, a standby. I love that one. Standby. Um, that's four. Comforter. Comforter. Yes, because he even says yes. Yeah, so he comforts. <laughs> Fantastic. You got another one? Uh no. no. <laughs> He's a comforter, advocate, standby. Uh -huh. Um. um. I feel like the people who know this are going to freak out. right? Yeah. Now. But, you know, it's it's easy for them because they're not on doing this on the spot. And I, I know I normally am prepared. I just wasn't sure that we were recording tonight. So right. for those of you who are like, this guy's never prepared. you got we got five of them, five out of seven. Yeah, that's not bad. Right. <laughs> but there's some other ones. Maybe intercessor. Definitely intercessor. OK. Um, but so every one of these words really means something. So this is Jesus saying, I'm giving you someone who <clears throat> who's going to intercede for you, who's going to comfort you when you're mourning, who's going to be a standby. And I love the way that sounds, standby. It almost means like he's standing right next to you, just saying, hey, you need help? You need help? I'm here for you, man. What can I help you with? Yeah. You know, who's here to teach you all things. How stupid do I feel half the time? I need someone to teach me everything, you know? Uh, advocate. He advocates for me. He's, he's, he helps me. Mm -hmm. 
That's a big word. I, I'm, I'm stopping there for a reason. It doesn't just mean yeah, he helps me. Sure. No, he helps you in everything in your life. Um, and there's another, I'll get to it here. Hold on. There's another one in, in 1426. This is probably where it's at. <clears throat> he says, but the helper or the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name. So will send has not been sent yet at this time. Mm -hmm. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So it's another thing. You say teacher, that sounds good. But here he says he will teach you all things. Uh -huh. He's going to teach you everything, anything you want to know, <laughs> you know, and, and not. And so here, here's an example. This is kind of what I mean by all things. So I found myself in a situation a few years ago where I had a Subaru and something happened to it and I had to uh, um, buy a part and try to fix it myself. Now I have some automotive experience, but I'm no mechanic. I'm just not. Um, and I was, Subaru is stupid. <laughs> so they, they have, they have the engine, which is a, a box stir or a boxer engine, which means it's flat. It's not a V. So it's all the pistons go like that instead of like a V. So they're flat and uh, they throw every other part on top of that engine. Mm -hmm. So if you were trying to get to the engine, it almost makes more sense to go from the bottom. Yeah. You know, which the frames in the way. So I say all that to say it's a nightmare. Everything is just compiled and compacted into one tiny spot. And so if you're trying to do one thing, you got to take seven things off to get to it. Um, and so I was in that in that place and I'd been working on it for far too long and it was very frustrated. And my wife was out there and she was like, can I help you? And I was like, I don't know. You can try. I got this bolt. I'm trying to this would make more sense in video. But like I'm trying to like get my hand here so I can move it up and then twist to the right. And that's where the hole is. So you've twisted your arm into a painful spot and you have no more strength left in your fingers. <laughs> Probably because you don't have blood flow going to your fingers. Yeah. And you still have to try to thread that bolt uh -huh. to get it in. And so that's what I was doing. And I was so frustrated. I may have been lost control a little bit. Uh -huh. And in that moment, I felt the Holy Spirit, here's that standby, say to me, you haven't asked me anything yet. Uh huh. Right. And I was just like, I didn't know you were still here because I didn't think you hung around when people dropped the F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> if I can be real. And uh, no, not really. But I, I was just like, I, like, I'm so frustrated that I didn't ask you. But like now I feel like I lost my temper. Now I don't want to ask you because it's awkward. And so I was just like, all right, I, I'm, I'm going to have to humble myself here. Mm -hmm. I need, I need your help. What, how do I get this? And I'm telling you, it wasn't like a open vision. It wasn't like I had this mystical foggy thing happen, but in my mind, I just had an image because I'm facing the car messing with this stupid bolt. And I had this image of me with my back to the car reaching like this behind me. Mm -hmm. And I had that. And I was like, that's the dumbest. No. I'm like, I face forward when I do things. I know how to get my hand in here. And I was just like, this is dumb. And I don't know if this is the Holy Spirit, but I'll just try it. Because uh -huh. what do you have to lose? And I did. I, I faced the other way. And I found my arm got in so much easier. Mm -hmm. I, I Something about the way my arm was, was positioning wasn't working. And it was like, I got it right in. And I started to screw it. And Erin was <laughs> headed back to me. And I was like, I got it. I got it. And she was like, you're kidding me. And I was like, I got it. The Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. He's really smart. He's really smart. <laughs> he's really smart. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that's kind of that idea. Now that that's a, a funny illustration, but uh -huh. I'm telling you, that's, that's how the whole, he wants to teach you all things. Uh -huh. If you can humble yourself and ask him, I don't understand math. I don't understand whatever this is. I need your help. And he, he doesn't just do it for you. He gives you the wisdom so that you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he wants to partner with you in whatever you're doing, whether it be ministry, you know, or trying to fix the car. I think sometimes people um, take the practical out of God and they're like, yeah, well, that's church stuff. And it's like, no, the Holy Spirit literally knows everything. You yes. understand? He knows uh -huh. everything. Yeah. I want help in everything because I feel like I'm stupid in everything. Mm -hmm. So I need a good teacher. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that's that. I mean, I've had similar experiences like that um, where when I was uh, working for a company that sold 
toner and, and, and like big office printers and stuff. I, I was in charge of, uh, I would have to go out and perform maintenance on them. And they didn't train you. They handed you a manual or that made you download one on your phone and you were expected to do it. And I'm like, this is craziness. Mm -hmm. What kind of business model is this? <laughs> but, and so just because that I'm like, I, I don't have a mecha mechanical mind. I'm not a mechanical engineer or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and so the only thing that I could do was pray about it. I'm like, this is my job. This is how I support my family. Um, and so God, please help me yeah. <laughs> with this. And he did. And it, it extended <clears throat> not just to that, but I was able to install uh, three ceiling fans in my house because of that. All right. W without any... Um, uh, without any tutorials. So uh, it was weird. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. That, that translated. Right. And, you know, since then I've learned just to, you know, ask God, you know, to teach me just to be with me in any situation that I'm f foreign mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Um, and that includes writing papers. Sure. So sometimes, like, I don't wouldn't say that um, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but sometimes, like, it feels like when I'm writing the paper, uh, somebody else, not somebody else is writing for me, but somebody is with me mm -hmm. writing the paper. Uh -huh. Like, and I don't mean beside me, I mean within me. Yeah. And so... And that might sound weird, but you know the Holy Spirit is is said to be inside us, so yeah. that that shouldn't be weird. So yeah, I think going back to your point about the Holy Spirit being smart, you know, Dallas Willard in, in his book The Divine Conspiracy says that we should think of God being smart because He is the one who created the universe right. in the first place. So I mean, yeah, to teach God can literally teach you anything. I was listening to a, a scientist talk one time about how uh, how complex the atom is. Mm -hmm. He was referring to Charles Darwin, and he was saying his understanding of the atom at that time was well advanced to what the scientific world understood. Mm -hmm. And the person asked him, he's like, well, what what did Darwin know uh, then, like compared to what we know now about, right. about the atom? And so he said... <clears throat> He said that um, that it was it would be like walking into a room full of smoke and smog and seeing the outline of something and saying, "Oh, I know what that is." He's like, "The atom is so complex. Mm -hmm. it, we today in 2022 still really have no idea how complex this was." And Charles Darwin at that time had you know a smoky image of maybe what it could be, right? The complexities of it. And this is obviously not my field. Like science is not my field. But I love to hear really smart people talk about how complex and brilliant creation really is. Right. It's amazing to me. Like yeah. we have what, thir thir 13 trillion cells in our bodies? This sure. person has about 13 trillion. Yeah. And, they, and they're all like work to, to perfection mm -hmm. to carry out what they're, what they're created by God to do. Mm -hmm. Like that amount of order is, is inescapable to even think that an intelligent being would not create that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and, uh, I was going to say something to compliment that, uh, the, Adam. the, yeah, George Washington Carver creator of, I think penicillin and something else super important peanut butter. Peanut butter yes. <laughs> That's all I, remember. I was thinking peanut butter, <laughs> but I wasn't sure like if, if he actually invented peanut butter but I'm pretty sure so. that's the common knowledge that he invented peanut butter. I but he also know. created penicillin. I did not know that. Uh, and he, he was being, because he was a, a, a Christian as well. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, God told me what to do with the peanut mm -hmm. when he was being questioned. Because, um, and he said, you know, I didn't know this beforehand, but God told me what to do with the peanut and I did it. And, now we have this and that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the Holy Spirit is smart 
uh, God, God is smart and he, I, I agree with you that mm -hmm. he can teach you anything and we need to recognize that and, you know, give him the glory for that. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, um, and I, I, I came to that out of the scripture, um, in, uh, in 26, where he said, he will teach you all things. So, <clears throat> so we have a, um, we have a helper, we have the paraclete and did you find pleader is another word that is paraclete also means. So you hit, you hit the main ones. It's giving me five uh, and you've five definitions for the word for paraclete. Right. And there's you, you seven. hit them all. There's seven. Though. There could be seven, but it's, it's giving me, uh, three main ones and then two other ones that are also related to it. So it gives you advocate, helper, intercessor, mm -hmm aid uh and pleader and comforter so that's six sorry um i don't see a seventh okay but well, I'll, I'll e even even so you st you still hit them all yeah sure so th th it's really important to to see that so uh, so we have that teacher in all things so he will teach you in all things which is mm -hmm. a huge phrase and he will bring to your remembrance all things that i said to you so the Holy Spirit can be there. Uh, that that almost speaks to the standby mm -hmm. that He helps you remember what you have learned, and I, and uh, so going back to prayer, that's one of the prayers I pray for people all the time, especially people who I know are born again, who I know have the seed of righteousness in them, who I know know the Word. And one of the things I'll pray for them is we talked about last time about that their eyes would be enlightened, mm -hmm. but I pray that the Holy Spirit would remind them of the truth that they know. Mm -hmm. He can only remind you of the truth that you know. The truth that you heard because he even said it, he's not really teaching you something new per se he is but um he's he's reminding you of what you already know all things that i said to you so he'll bring back things to you sometimes and right a lot of times in prayer i'll be praying for something and he'll remind me of, of something i'm like yes i knew that thank you mm -hmm. or i'll ask you there's a scripture here holy spirit i need you to help me remember what that scripture was and it's like bam there it is yes galatians got it you know so that's one of his activities. So very clearly, we see Jesus is explaining, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He helps you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to aid you. He's going to help stand by. He's going to teach you all things. He's going to help you remember things. Very specific things, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is Jesus, like laying it all on the line. Like, let's take the mysticism out of this. What does the Holy Spirit do? He helps you. Right. You know? Uh-huh. Uh, I used the illustration that one time about uh, Reinhard Bonnke and his wife who had the uh, uh, power steering problem and it, it didn't have a power steering pump. And then they got a, a power steering car, car with power steering, and she was able to turn the wheel with one finger. Mm -hmm. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He assists you to make life easy, mm -hmm. to make everything easy, you know, comfort you when you're in pain. You know, let's not gloss over that. How important is that, man? Right. Yeah. Life can be hard. You need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So, how does that, where does that go to as far as praying in tongues? Oh, I'm getting there. Okay. Don't you worry. No, so I, I always like to start there because uh -huh. it's like, you know, people, people who ask this question, want, they, they respect Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so, I wanna, what does Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? Right. Uh, I'll just say in a couple of 16, John 16, seven, real quick. Uh, so he's telling his disciples, uh, it is to your, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if Jesus was still alive today, like on the earth today, I couldn't receive from him unless I was next to him. Right. Yeah. So he leaves and now the Holy Spirit can live in all of us. And now it's like having your own personal Jesus in right. a sense. It's like, I don't need to be in Israel to hear Jesus. Mm -hmm. If he lives in me through the person of the Holy Spirit, that's the best for me. And he's telling them this because they're probably in pain thinking we don't want to lose our teacher. Right. If they even understood what he was saying about going away. Uh, we don't want to lose our teacher. He's telling him, I'm not going to leave you alone. And it's actually better for you that I leave, which is hard to think of what's better than having Jesus there. Well, what's better is having the spirit in everybody. Mm -hmm. 
And so he says, it's to your advantage I go, because as soon as I go, I send him. And so he says, another activity of the Spirit. Um, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So, so the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Wait, what? Tim. <laughs> yes. No, you and I sin. are supposed to do that to other people, not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but notice it's the, the world of sin. Yeah. He convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of the coming judgment. You know, it's almost like he's saying the Holy Spirit tells you you are living in sin. And here's here's a contrast. Here's what righteousness looks like. You see yourself far from that. And if you continue in that, what comes next? Judgment. God's judgment comes from that. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That that leads you to repentance. Right. I, I want to say this. I, I think this is correct, but I'm saying this with a grain of salt. He is not saying this to believers. Okay. Do, does the Holy Spirit convict you of sin? Yes, to deal with it. But it, but I, I would put it this way. I would say he's 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 letting you know don't live in sin because you are righteous. Right. And if you if you continue in sin, you will not escape judgment. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I'm, I'm making that distinction just because I'm saying he says specifically the world. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts the world of sin. And when they repent, then they are in Christ. Then they are made righteous. They are made holy. And we don't have to keep going back over some of these elementary things. We know sin is wrong. We know we have been made righteous. But that that's the distinction. The Holy Spirit now leads me in truth. And the truth is I've been made righteous. Mm -hmm. You know, um, da, da, da. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and they see me no more. And of judgment because of the ruler of this world is judged. Um, okay, so I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. Mm -hmm. Just so specific takes all of the cloud mysticism out of it. You know, why did I freak out at that? Cause I love that. I love the fact that it's like, he leads you in truth. That means you can trust him. He's not going to speak lies to you. You mm -hmm. know, um, I don't mean to get political, but I, I have, this is the only thing that's coming to my mind right now. Like when I think of when Fauci was like, you don't need masks, you know, mm -hmm. it's fine. And then to come to find out, he said, well, I just said that because I didn't want everyone to buy masks in the medical field, not to have anything. It's yeah. Like, so you lied because you were hiding a, maybe a good agenda. Maybe it's almost like the end justifies the means sort of thinking. And I say that to say that the Holy Spirit's not going to do that. He's going to speak the truth, the whole truth. He's not going to withhold things from you. Right. He's so trustworthy. That's good to know. He loves truth. He is the spirit of truth. Um, he does not speak on his own authority. God's not going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit's going to be like, I know God said that, but mm -hmm. you don't know him like I know him. He's having a hard day. They, they're in perfect unity, in perfect harmony. They harmonize perfectly with each other. That's an important thing to know about the Holy Spirit. It's almost like all three persons of the Godhead have one will. It's almost like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, that, gosh, these things seem simple and elementary, right. but I'm telling you, most people can't even tell you where this is in Scripture. You could ask them, tell me some characteristics about the Holy Spirit. And you'd be like, oh, doesn't he yell and scream and punch people? And, you know, it's like, really, they just bring up some crazy Pentecostal thing. It's like, well, what does Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Most people couldn't tell you. And he shows you things to come. This is this is so important for me because sometimes in my prayer life, when I'm praying in tongues, I'll feel I used to have this instructor who um, uh, in Bible college who would she use the phrase pray out the plan of God. So if you're in if you're in a moment where you're not sure what to do, you're not sure I'm, I, I'm at a critical juncture right now. I don't know. Should I take this job? Should I not take this job? Where should we move? We, we have to make some decisions. She said, you need to just pray in the spirit and pray out the plan of God. You're praying out his will and his promises. It's almost like you're laying tracks for your future. And I've used this principle more times than I can even say. While at the same time knowing I need the Holy Spirit to tell me what I should do. Because he can see what's coming and I can't. 
So something may look good, but here's the Holy Spirit. I'm inviting him in. Help me with this. What do I do? Where sh what should I do here? And suddenly this thing that seems really good, suddenly mm, something in my spirit's telling me this might not be good. Let me pray a little longer on that. And then the more I pray about it, the more clear it becomes. It's almost like smoke leap. Have you ever seen that like where it's really foggy out? And then the sun comes up and then suddenly just you see it almost disappearing. This is like what clarity in the spirit does. Yeah, man. Yeah. Pentecostals, we call that praying through. Mm. All right. Praying through. Yeah, it's pray through Terry at the altar because you do. Terry, that is a very old school. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, stuff takes time. Yes. I mean, you're dealing with. You're dealing with heavy situations and you are dealing with submit, submitting your will. You're humbling yourself. And we'll, we'll just say that humbling yourself in prayer. Mm -hmm. And you're, <laughs> that's not easy. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes time. The more you humble yourself in prayer, the more clear it is to hear and see what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yeah. And so that's key. You just uh, you, you, it takes I mean, spend all the time that you need in prayer, I think. Um, and for the younger people, Terry means wait. Yeah. <laughs> We're not talking about our friend Terry. Nope. No. Nope. T-A-R-R-Y. Yes. Terry, the altar. Um, and, uh, go ahead. No, that's I, it's important that you said humble yourself because mm -hmm. the tendency is. I see something that I want, this car, this wife, this job, and I'm going to pray and see if this is God will, God's will. Sometimes your want can be so strong that you're like, oh, I feel good about it. You're like, yeah, sure. That's the Holy Spirit. That could just be your will. Yeah. And so it does take that humility to be able to distance yourself and say, I don't, I don't trust myself because I want this so bad. I need your wisdom because I can't see what's ahead. But the Holy Spirit's not, not attached emotionally like that. The Holy Spirit's not, I want you to have this so bad. You know, he's, <laughs> he's able to just feel like, look, it all seems good. But like, let's just take a step back. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Pray about this. You mm -hmm. know, he's not in any, any hurry. Um, but I love that one. He will tell you things to come. It's almost like you're a uh, everyday fortune teller, right? You can know sometimes what's going to happen. I don't just mean like fully, fully prophet. I, in, in a sense, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have prophetic. Yes, prophetic. Okay. Yes. You might not sit in the office of a prophet. And there's mm -hmm. a difference. But it's almost like you, you, you can know if the Holy Spirit wills to show you what's coming in your life. And sometimes he'll give you direction in prayer. If you have a disciplined prayer life, he can sometimes give you those little nudgings. Hey, this is coming. This is coming. Like, wait a minute. Whoa, that's coming? Wait, or something's coming. You need to prepare, you know? Yeah. So that's okay. important. It's important to know. The Holy Spirit it wants is, to help yeah. you because he knows he's going to tell you what's coming. Mm -hmm. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Cool little picture there, right? Mm -hmm. I love it, man. Uh, I think that was the end of that one. Are we out of Jesus yet? Yes. Now we can get into tongues, tongues. Okay. So these are just some very good things about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Okay, so with with that, sorry, I was I'm I'm okay. having to process my thoughts while we do this. Can you can we expand praying into spirit in the spirit to encompass what you just said? I think I already did. I may let to make it obvious. Okay. Because when I think of praying in the spirit, I'm thinking about tongues. Mm -hmm. And the way that you just described it, you could throw under the umbrella of praying in the spirit as well. Almost like praying in the spirit can be multi multifaceted. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to I'm going to I'm going to kick that rock as far as I can go, man, with the mul <laughs> multifaceted. Multi <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. Yes, the Holy Spirit is is, uh, is multifaceted, no question. Um, what was I going to say? There was I watched a uh, 
Dateline maybe or mm-hmm. 2020 um, segment about tongues. I don't know if you've seen it. It's really interesting. Uh, no, I don't think I have. Not a Christian organization. Right. So they, I'll, I'll give you the brief synopsis. Uh-huh. So they, they, um, they talked to a pastor and they were like, you know, tell us about tongues. And so he kind of gave a, an illustration. He was, he was a funny guy. He said, um, he said, you know, we're, people think we're just crazy because we, we pray in tongues and, and we are, <laughs> but there there's there's real science to this and we don't fully understand it we just see it in the word we believe it it's a part of of what us pentecostals believe or you know charismatic whatever uh and and but we'll see what you guys have to say about this and so they interviewed a bunch of people and then they put um they put obviously when it comes to science once again not my field but they put something on on their maybe it was a put them in a uh, CAT scan, maybe okay. or something like that, mm-hmm. where they're able to monitor um, their brain, the brain okay. activity. Yeah. And so they, they said, OK, they had them under and they were like, they said they did this with several people. And they said, OK, pray in English. And so he was like, Lord, I just pray for these scientists right now. I pray that you would guide them in their experiments in Jesus name. I'm like, OK, pray in tongues. And shun that He starts get, getting into it. And then, uh, and the same thing, it shows all the other people and what they're going through. One, one woman was like, almost like falling out in the spirit. She was holding on to her, like <laughs> holding on to her medical uh, IV or whatever it was. And she was just like, Whoa! like, it was just powerful for her. And so we're all laughing, watching this and it was just cool. And so what they found was that when you were praying in English, your brain was firing so many different parts of your brain were firing on all cylinders. And as soon as you started praying the spirit, it like flatlined. Hmm. It was like nothing was happening in the brain. And that's interesting because um, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, is that right? Where well, he, he, he does bring up tongues. Yeah. Yes. He talks a lot about uh-huh. tongues. The yeah. entire thing is almost about tongues. Mm-hmm. What he says is that when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my knowledge is unfruitful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, so what I mean is that like when you're praying, this is your heavenly language. It's a communication between you and God. And it sounds like you have no idea what I'm saying in the natural. So you're not using your natural mind. You're using like your spiritual mind, so to speak. And so that's why your natural mind is not doing much. You're praying with the spirit. You're almost able to bypass this hindrance called mm-hmm. your brain. Let's bypass that so that I can hear from the Holy Spirit. And I thought that was just really cool that like science proved scripture, you know? Yeah. That there is the natural mind. Um, the way this seems right to man, your natural brain, God uses that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about spiritual things, sometimes you have to use what's called like uh, Paul refers to as the the spirit of your mind. Mm-hmm. It's it's still your mind, but it's it's not your brain. It's, you know, it's the intelligence of the spirit, mm-hmm. which is spiritual, which is not natural, which is why your natural mind is almost doing nothing. <sighs> yeah. So that was that. And we can get more into that. Dr. Tony Ritchie, who's been on the podcast before, talks a little bit this in a paper called Transposition of Tongues. Um, and he called that paper has that title because C.S. Lewis uh, had a sermon called Transposition all about talking in tongues. It was like 1944, and then it was published in 1949. Uh, but anyways... It's all about your, your, so you just brought up that uh, you have to use your spiritual mind. Mm-hmm. The, the, your physical mind has limitations, yeah. right? And so in Romans 8, 26 and 27, maybe, uh, you know, we don't, it, it talks about, we don't know always know how to pray. We're, yes. we're limited. Yes. We're very limited. And so, and it's, it's frustrating because there's just the stuff that you feel in your spirit, or even in your heart. Let's get, let's get holistic and in, in, mm-hmm. in just your being. Yeah. Okay. And you don't know how to say it. 
And so the spirit intercedes for for you. And so that's an allusion to speaking in tongues. It's what he called an implicit allusion to speaking in in tongues. And because uh, this heavenly gift, which is almost is beyond comprehension to our physical mind, is being not funneled, but I can't remember how he says it, but it's it's being gifted to us, mm-hmm. and we can't intellig- intelligibly recognize hmm. what it is, so we speak it in, in tongues. Yes, uh-huh. um, and and that is a process called transposition when a higher reality is uh, moved to a lower re- mm-hmm. reality, and yeah. we're we're the lower reality. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so that's a that's like a philosophical, scientific, uh, but also theological way to think uh, about tongues because um, we're speaking in, in a language that we don't know, right? Um, and so um, there there's something going on there, and that is this what the spirit is doing, yeah. And and so. Um, and that's and that's huge. Uh, and I was going to get into Romans eight eventually because, but the, mm-hmm. now that you said it, I might as well say it. That is, that is a huge thing. So recently there was the Texas school shooting. Right. Okay. There is so much heartache yeah. and so much pain and mm-hmm. so much. Oh, I hate everyone makes everything political. Yeah. I feel like we can't agree on anything, and so I'm angry. I'm funneling all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, anger for the. The, at the killer anger at the cops anger at politicians who can't can't mourn for one second without putting their political agenda it, so i'm dealing with a lot mm-hmm. and i'm telling you i relied and i don't know if he'll ever listen to this but shout out to chad hampton uh one of my friends he he posted that uh the scripture you just said in romans 8 maybe 26 um and I'll just let me just read it um, sure go ahead i don't want to misquote the bible um here we go. Okay, so 26. Yeah, I was right. Uh, or maybe you were right. Uh, da, da, da. So he's talking about hope for we do not, 25, for, uh, for if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So he says 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the, the, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Meaning in that moment, I'm dealing with frustration and anger. Instead of just praying for something that sounds good, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to pray for. Yeah, I don't know how to pray. So I'm just going to pray in tongues and then use my prayer however it's necessary, but also enlighten me and give me other things to pray for in English. Right. That I can, yes. that I can articulate. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, there was a point about that English but that I'll I'll maybe find that later. Um so yes, so let let's let let's stay on this uh Romans mm-hmm. issue. Let me let me bring out uh what transposition actually means. So it's it says here in the paper, I'm reading from Dr. Ritchie's paper about C.S. Lewis and in transposition. He says Lewis C.S. Lewis suggests that our emotional life is more complex than our than than our sensations. So we have the sen- sensations, which are our physical mm-hmm. feelings, but our but our emotional life is way more complex than just sensations. Sure. Okay, uh, and thereby uh, we're forced to use a lower medium to express. Uh, higher experiences so we're forced to uh use um a lower medium so our sensations are a lower medium that is expressing a complex yeah uh higher experience of our emotional life Mm -hmm. okay um and he says that even to the point of of uh, having to use the same sensations for a variety of experiences so let's talk about goosebumps. Mm-hmm. You can experience goosebumps when you're scared, when you're happy, yeah. when 
all of these uh, em even, emotions. Even cold. <laughs> even cold, yeah. So, um, And so this is an adaption uh, from a richer to a poorer medium. It, it's called transposition. So that transposition is a familiar element of human experience and is illustrated from the practice of drawing pictures, which is a lower medium mm. of the real world, which is a higher reality. Sure, yeah. Okay, uh, in order to experience the, the grander reality. So um, knowing knowing the higher rea reality is necessary for properly understanding the lower form used to, exp to express it. So um i th i think what he's what he's saying here is um we have to know god in order to properly understand what the heck is going on in these lower experiences we're talking yeah. about yeah. um speaking in tongues and i but but speaking in tongues is is a holy thing mm -hmm. but the but speaking is sort of a lower reality um in in that um yeah, it, well i would say i would almost say it's almost like you're trying to articulate something that is way too complex yeah. for you to understand right it's right hard to do that uh -huh. so you just find whatever words that you have right so uh so you, you one must not look at a drawing include it is reality and that no three-dimensional reality <laughs> right. exists right? right yeah so the concept of symbolism is inadequate to explain this phenomenon, uh, since the picture really does not participate in the reality it portrays. Therefore, a sacramental understanding is preferable to the merely symbolic. Okay. So th think of tongues sacramentally rather than symbolic. Hmm. Um, and then, so that's what transposition in tongues is in, in you, it's, Tongues isn't gobbledygook. It's mm -hmm, right. He, he's saying no. This is a, a higher reality being communicated in a, a lower um, expression. I yes. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. but it's a complete mystery to us. Yes. But it is uh -huh. a heavenly language. It is right. Yeah. Right, right. And it, it's not just us repeating. I don't know the 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 same word right. again and again and again. It's it's it really is a, a language in and of itself, which is articulating like you said right a, and a heavenly truth right and it, it plays into the the inner it, it's inner it's intercessory in nature yeah which, what if you want to call it transposition or whatever mm -hmm. that that whole point of that passage is in intercessory in, in nature and so um and and i would say this too almost from the opposite perspective because we're talking about tongues and holy things and right. righteous things I don't know if you've ever heard this before. I've heard a, a few uh, like ghost sort of experiences. And I feel like almost every time I, I hear about something like that person who's not a Christian, not a believer, not spiritual at all, will say, like, I felt a dark sensation in the room. It got cold and I felt something was like dread. I felt dread come over me. And I was listening to that, you know, the several times that I've heard it. And I'm always like. Even th there is a sensation happening yeah. that's not your five senses, but you're picking up on something. You just don't know what to do with it. Exactly. You know, yeah. so that would be the, the other side of what mm -hmm. we're talking about, mm -hmm. being able to pick up on something. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't I don't remember. So I don't know if you had anything else to, to well, say. Off that. I, I just, just to drive the point home, there are so many things we don't know what to pray for. You know, mm -hmm. if we decide I want to pray, um, I want to pray for you because I know you're going through something, but I don't know any details. You just text me and said, Tim, I need you to pray for me right now. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm praying. What am I praying for? I don't know. I don't know what he could be in a car accident. He could just found out some tragic news. Let me just pray in the spirit. And I'm seeking the Holy Spirit. And I'm tuning. like we talked about last time. I'm tuning in. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm tuning into the language of the Holy Spirit, knowing I'm going to pray and uh and oh that was it i don't remember which phrase and I, I apologize for not being fully prepared for this but um this is what i was thinking of i'm in that passage there's a certain phrase or a certain word and it almost means like the holy spirit helps us lift things 
He helps us lift things we are not able to lift on our own, mm-hmm. to bear burdens we're not able to bear on our own. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, one of those Greek words in there refers to that. So it, it's almost like the Holy Spirit's helping me lift something yeah. because it's so big. It's so heavy. I don't know how to do this, but he gives me that burden to pray sometimes. And I've mm-hmm. heard this many times of a lot of ministers just being in prayer and then someone comes to mind. And it's like, as they're praying, that person keeps coming to their mind. They're like, oh, I think the Holy Spirit wants me to pray for that person. And then in that time, a heavy burden starts to fall on them where it's like, oh, that person's going through something right now. I got to pray for them. And then come to find out later that person was almost in a car accident and almost died. You know, I've heard that like with my father-in-law, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, So the Holy Spirit helps us with when we don't know what to pray for. And he helps us lift and carry uh, burdens, you yeah. know, lift off of, or, you know, to carry a heavy burden you may be carrying. Right. 